Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Today's video is just going to be a short little how-to in regards to the Terminator X software. The step that we're going to be talking about is verifying static timing. It's a very important step, one that you need to do almost near the beginning of your setup. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the laptop here and because I'm going to show you how to do this through the software. And this video is more intended towards the new beginner, uh, the novice, or someone that's setting it up for the first time has never dabbled in regards to the Holly software. So let's go ahead and get the laptop hooked up and I'll show you guys the steps you need to take to verify static timing. If I could go ahead and show you guys start to finish what you'd be doing to set this up. So once you have your laptop connected to your CAN bus cable, double click on the software, and we're gonna go ahead and download from the ECU icon right here. This will pull up everything that's currently in the Terminator X. And you'll see here, it's syncing up everything from the ECU, ready to rock and roll. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and start the car. All right, what we're going to do now, go to the circular icon with the drop down next to it. That's your sync with ECU icon. You need to make sure that the USB link is not set and used to say online right here. Select that right hand drop down and you'll see enable static timing check right here. We're gonna go ahead and select that option and you'll have, see if I can focus in for you guys. All right, so static timing value. So what you're gonna do, you'll have, it helps to have someone out in the engine bay with a timing light to be able to yell back the numbers for you. So if say you set the number to 20 degrees, select 20 there, and then you'd hit set. Once you hit set, you should notice, come on focus. Sorry guys. Once you hit set, you should notice a change immediately to the way your car is running. There, I hit set. And I can see that the car is holding 20 degrees. You would check at the harmonic balancer if it's at 20 degrees. All right. So now if you say you're at 20 degrees, great. One other important step. You need to also rev your vehicle, say up to about 2,000, 2,500 RPM. And have someone verify also that's still at 20 degrees. they verify it's at 20 you are all set you can hit the clear button here and now it's back to your timing table all right make sure it's either set or clear once you hit clear it's back to your table okay that was simple enough to be able to verify static timing now what if your harmonic balancer is not reading the degrees that you put in the static timing. It's real easy to change actually with the software and I'll show you where to do that. Go ahead and go to your system ICF and on the oh, there we go, USB link. We go to the USB link, we go to ignition parameters. All right, normally this is set to 10 degrees and this will be set at zero. So, when you're reading off the harmonic balancer, if you are off, say, and I'll give you my car as an example, I set mine to 20 degrees, and the harmonic, harmonic balancer read 18 degrees. So, I went into this option, and I went to 8 degrees. I pulled 2 degrees out of the ignition reference angle. Once I went to sync that with the ECU, it requested me to cycle the ignition for the new change. So I did just that, turned it off, waited about two seconds, turned it back on, and then also um, the ignition, the static timing, it stays with the software until you hit clear. 
so you don't have to worry about like with the handheld you redoing it each time up here it holds it until you hit clear after running the car again under static timing at 20 degrees changing my ignition reference angle to 8 it was reading 20 degrees now here's the really important step that sometimes gets overlooked the inductive delay when you rev the car past the idle stage say around 2,500 RPM and you hold it there if your timing starts to walk it may change ignition again it may change it to where it's again retarding timing or it's advancing timing mine was doing the well mine was actually pulling timing again so it was actually pulling it down to 18 degrees once I revved it so under inductive delay first thing I did was I changed this number from 0 to 50 cycled the ignition started it again revved it again and it barely made a change so I went ahead and went to 100 I did increments of 50 again every car is gonna be different so that's why you need to test this I strongly strongly advise you to do the rev test because again you could be robbing yourself of power or you could be making too much timing and you're you would never know it unless you did this so I kept on doing the same thing until I got to the number 200 and then it matched up at revving at 20 degrees and also static at 20 degrees after that I went ahead and saved those changes and cleared the went ahead and cleared the enable static timing check again you can do show you real quick I just went up to here and I hit clear once I hit clear it was back to using my ignition table so guys I hope that you guys were able to follow along it's a pretty easy process but it's kind of repetitive again it's extremely extremely important that you verify both the static and the revving because you do not want your timing walking on you and again every car is going to be different uh, the few cars that I've tuned um, there's been some I've ne I did not have to change the reference angle and there's been some that I've had to change it more than this same with the inductive delay some I've had to change a little bit some I've never had to touch every car is going to be different that's why it's important that you actually do it for to your car so I hope you got some value out of this video and if you have any other questions or anything feel free to hit me up I'll be happy to answer them if I can stay tuned for more Terminator X videos coming down the pipeline